A special welcome to all our families for week six of term two. Again, another eventful week here at Lorries. To begin with, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we live and meet. And I'd like to acknowledge the Yagara and Turrbal people and recognise their connection to land, water and community. I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. The Welcome to Country has been done today to recognise National Reconciliation Week. On Tuesday it was the anniversary of National Sorry Day and from Wednesday this week to Wednesday of next week it's National Reconciliation Week. Mr Caulfield is preparing a special video presentation for that week and to celebrate the week. We recognise all Aboriginal and Torres Strait members of our community and we indeed say sorry for any of the wrongs of the past as well. And I'd like to make it clear that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples are very much welcome in this community. So this is a very special week in our history and the history of our nation. This week we return to face-to-face -face teaching for all our students year 5 to 12. Obviously the 11s and 12s have been here for a couple of weeks, but it's very important that we get them all back into learning. Mr Cook and the heads of faculty have asked their teams to check for the boys' learning because we've noticed a large variety in engagement over this time. Some boys are actually way ahead, some boys are where we're expecting and some boys will need some support. At this point, we are looking at finding those boys that need support and looking at programs to get them up to speed as we move forward. It's, de it's indeed very important that they return to normal classes and normal learning. And as I've said the other day, it's a return to face-to-face -to -face and the online platform has uh, ceased at this point. Over the next couple of days, you probably have already received a survey going to parents. The survey is about online learning. Initially, we've had at this point over 500 responses and I'm looking at some of the things that have gone well, some of the things we would keep and some of the things that we can learn from, some of our learnings from online. I will say initially, the feedback has been extremely positive, with a couple of exceptions. So I thank you for that, and it will influence how we work into the future. So um, the next couple of weeks will be a consolidation period with our boys learning. I also make the point that we continue to follow government advice about how we can socially distance at bus stops, at um, tuck shop, canteen, and in other areas. You will note that our co-curricular program has begun for the older boys in some fashion, but we are following the guidelines sent out through the government at this point for that training. And that's why the younger boys haven't commenced at this stage, because it is limited to groups of up to 10. And that's very difficult when we have um, 1,960 students here. Can I make a special uh, plea to parents of year 11 and 12 boys, particularly year 12? I'm seeing a couple of warning signs here. Some of our Year 12 boys have been um, told that they'll have one less assessment task. So they're going from three internal per subject to two and one external exam, which happens in October. Some of those boys will finish internal assessment in the next couple of weeks. Indeed, some may have already finished. The challenge is to keep those boys engaged and studying towards their final external examination in October. Indeed, some of our boys this week have found that very challenging. So I impress upon all families to remember that at this school we expect respect for all our students with staff, with the schoolwork, with the environment and the reputation of the school. This week I've been doing enrolment interviews for next year and the year after, predominantly 2022. Interesting to hear that one of the parents has said her decision to send her son here is due to a bus that she travels on every day to the Mater and the outstanding behaviour of the boys on that bus. So I impress upon our young men, any small variation in outstanding behaviour can have consequences that don't affect them, but affect our school community. So we expect appropriate grooming, manners, respect, and they do their work to the best of their ability. Can I um, also thank Mr Mellon and Mr Caulfield again and Miss O'Neill for organising the Rice Liturgy which was conducted this morning on Friday. Again it went very well 
and it's a way that we keep the liturgical life of our college improving and growing through this time of non-gathering. An interesting st statistic. This week, we released at nine o'clock on Wednesday, the AIC sports program and our response to that program to all our parents and students. At five past nine, five minutes after the release of that, we had 312 responses. That is astronomical, we've never had that before. So obviously there is a keen interest in our AIC sporting program. We will recommence our sporting program, although it'll be different in term three, and shortly I'm going to interview the head of sport, Mr. Eddie Wallace, on what is happening in AIC, what the community response here has been at St. Lawrence's College, and what we will expect into the future. But I'll make a comment about all of our co-curricular activity. It's all subject to government uh, advice, and that could change overnight, or we may know exactly where we're heading based on current guidelines. That's a movable feast for us, but we want to give the boys as close as we can to an authentic experience of co-curricular, particularly our boys in year 12, and that's our aim for this year. I'd now like to uh, move to Mr. Eddie Wallace, and I'm going to ask him a few questions about co-curricular in Term 3 and 4. Mr. Wallace, I believe we have a return to Term 3 and 4 sport at the college. Could I just ask you, what were the values that drove the AIC Sportsmasters when they were looking at the new program? Okay, um, the eight uh, AIC schools really tried to work in fellowship with each other um, and come up with a program that uh, catered for all the sports that were still to be played in 2020 and coming up with the best possible outcome where all sports could be played um, and giving every boy an opportunity to have the best experience in those sports. Right, and so Eddie, just to... Um get my understanding right, we'll be playing traditional term two and three sports in all through term three, is that correct? Yes, so we're, we're, we're placing uh, two mini seasons of sports uh, within term three. Uh, what we've had to do is the traditional term two mini season or season of rugby and football, we've actually moved to the second half of term three. That allows us to uh, put in the appropriate uh, strength and conditioning, skill acquisition, and mainly a contact training that needs to occur for rugby to ensure it occurs safely. So we'll start with the first season will be of tennis and basketball. So just to clarify, Mr. Wallace, we'll have the first season, first half of the term will be uh, tennis and basketball and then we'll move to football and rugby, with chess being played during that time as well. Yeah, so chess will remain uh, linked with football and rugby. Um, concurrently through that will be cross country. So as a, as a guide, cross country or the ARC cross country championships, we're planning to have that as in the middle of the term and that will be a nice little division of the two seasons. Right, okay. And um, I know that in the documentation sent to families that you sent a survey to them. Can you talk to us about the reason for that survey? To move forward in our planning, we need to have a guide to how many students would like to play each sport. So that survey that's been sent home is an expression of interest. It gives the sports department an opportunity to understand exactly how many boys are interested in playing. Acknowledging that circumstances have now changed with uh, families as well as school and how school sport looks. So we need to get an indication right now of exactly how many boys we're planning for trials, for coaches, for number of teams and how that fits in with all the government guidelines that we'll need to follow. Right. And Eddie, I know that we've had some of our open teams already participating in strength and conditioning, really boot camp style, style yep. training. And we're making precautions there, which I've seen. But could you talk to me around some of the planning and precautions the sports department has made for our return to sport and training? Yep. So the government, both the Queensland and the federal government, have released a number of guidelines. Um, the college is following all of those, and they basically follow the roadmap back to Queensland going back to normality, which is through three stages at the moment. We expect there'll be a stage four, but at the moment we have three stages. So we're presently in stage one, uh, we're allowed groups of 10. That includes a coach, so nine students in a coach are able to participate in outdoor training non-contact so our first teams across all of our sports are currently um, doing boot camp style activities where they're separated in groups of 10 following all the government guidelines and precautions around health and safety when we move to stage two the stage moves to groups of 20 again there's some changes in the guidelines st lawrence's will follow all the guidelines when we move to stage three uh, stage two and then on to stage three okay and um, I know as a, 
a community here, we've had a real focus on the Year 12s, having as normal a year as possible. Could you talk about some of the changes that we've looked at for our senior boys, which may not be in the AIC competition, but uh, for their experience of sport in Term 3? So um, with all of our open development squads, we've aimed to have more than just the AIC fixtures. So yeah, if you look at the uh, calendar that was put out, there's a number of trial games beforehand, and our aim is to give our open squads as much of a normal season as possible. So that's probably six or seven games, and that's beyond the four games that will be in the AIC season. So in the AIC, it'll be in pools, We'll have uh, four schools in a pool and the winner of each pool will play a final and um, whoever comes second will play off for third, etc. Correct. So the idea is to have a finals day and again, exactly what you just said, Chris, 1v1 in the pool, 2v2, so every school will have an opportunity to play on that finals, finals day. day. Okay. And Eddie, um, how have you found the reaction from the community as to your announcements recently that have been sent out? I think the community is very excited. You just walk around the playground today, Chris, and the boys are talking about sport again. Um, it gives us and everyone a chance to look forward, to, to forget about what's happened over the recent times and to plan and have an idea of getting back to that normality, whatever that may be. Yes, and, and Eddie, I think it's also very important for me that um, already your music are doing some form of rehearsal and ensemble work, but there's actually more students involved in the music program than any single sporting co-curricular event and I know you speak very regularly with Mr Capern about how we can keep everything going so your focus is of course sport but I know you do focus on the entire student population here. Yeah we at St Lawrence's we've got a wonderful co-curricular program whether that's our sporting program whether that's our music program whether that's our service learning uh, faith in action program it's important that we all do communicate so we can give the best possible experience to our boys and that's what we'll do, be doing next term when it's an incredibly busy time for our sports program we'll be talking with the music we'll be talking with faith in action to make sure that that experience of all the boys is as authentic as possible and they enjoy that experience. Well uh, Mr Wallace I know you Mr Gibb and your department have worked tirelessly planning. Um, I know at the start of last term um, you're a bit concerned about what you'd be doing this term but I think you've worked out a hell of a lot of planning has probably meant that I think St Lawrence is, is, is in a good place but I do make the point however it's always subject to government guidelines. There can be changes in health requirements based on the virus itself and at the moment this is our best planning that we can do. New information comes out every week to us. We'll just continually to modify how we're going to um, respond to that information. Again, following those government guidelines, so it's the best possible experience for our students, but take into account the importance that we have in our community to make sure everyone's safe. Right, and of course, safety is the most important thing. So Mr Wallace, thank you for your time and thank you for your work. And uh, I hope um, training next week goes really well. Thanks, Mr Lidbow.